Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, during the previous few lectures, um, we have discussed um, scalar and vector fields, and uh, we were talking about certain characteristics of these fields, like gradient for scalar field, and for vector fields, we were talking about divergence and curl and Carl was in two-dimensional and three-dimensional case. Um, all this was basically a preparation for Maxwell equations of electromagnetic field because these operators are very much involved in expression of these uh, Maxwell equations in contemporary form. Maxwell himself, by the way, did not use something like a nabla um, symbol. He was using straight derivative, partial derivatives. And in our case, we were trying to kind of shorten the formula, and that's why we have used this very convenient symbol, nabla, which can be applied as a multiplication to a scalar field or as a, a scalar product of a vector field or a vector product of a vector field. Now, uh, again, before um, involved, be before getting involved in uh, Maxwell equations, let's just do a couple of problems related to um, fields. <coughs> we will basically calculate all these characteristics like gradient, divergence, and, and curl, um, just to be a little bit more familiar with, uh, with numbers, with fields, how they feel, etc. Now, this uh, lecture is part of the course Physics for Teens presented on Unisor.com and I suggest you always to watch the lecture from the website because it's a course which means there is a menu, there is a sub-menu, so you have to go for instance for this lecture to a Physics for Teen course on this uh, website and there are other courses like Mass for Teens for example and uh, the part of the course related to whatever I'm talking about is called waves and then the sub-menu would be field waves and among field waves you will see this particular lecture which is problems, uh, field problems basically and there are other lectures as well as the ones which we were talking before and the ones which we will be talking um, as far as Maxwell's equations are okay so um, I have three problems, relatively straightforward, but again, the purpose is to get familiar with fields and calculations of these characteristics of the fields. Okay, the first problem is about gravity. So we have a gravitational field. Let's consider a planet Earth on a macro scale. So we are always considering um, these masses as point masses and uh, obviously the gravitational field is um, the field where you have the forces radially directed towards the source so if this is the source mass m so all the gravitation forces are this type towards towards the center this is not exactly towards the center this one is. Okay, now according to the Newton's law, um, if we have a mass m, then the field, the, the force of the, uh, of the gravitational field would be g times m times m. This is gravitational constant, this is mass of the source of gravitation, this is mass of the probe object, and it will be inversely proportional to square of the distance, right? And I'm talking about x, y, z as coordinates, basically, of this point, considering my center mass is at point zero, 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 at origin of coordinates. And this mass is at x, y, z. So this is something which I'm sure we we all remember from, from physics, from elementary physics. Um, now, maybe a little bit less um, 
familiar or maybe you don't remember it well um, for this gravitational uh, force there is a concept of potential gravitational potential now what is potential potential of the field is amount of work which is needed to bring the unit mass from infinity to point XYZ. Now this was addressed actually in the part of the course, the same course, Physics for Genes, uh, in the part called Energy, and within that part there was a, again topic potential energy, and within it there were uh, some lectures related to gravity, and I do suggest you maybe to review these lectures if you don't remember what is this gravitational potential. But in any case, the explanation of this is amount of work per unit of mass to bring it from infinity to a particular point. So m is equal to 1, and this unit, uh, unit of mass needs a certain amount of work. Now, in this particular case, I put minus in front of this amount of work, because if not we have to do this work, it's the gravitational field does it for us. The reverse operation from the point to infinity would be on us, that would be positive, but the same value basically. So it's G times M, and uh, it was inversely proportional to square root. To a distance, basically. Square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, it's a distance to this point. I mean, if we are talking about, let's say, another variable called r, for example, the distance, it would be minus gm divided by r. Um, now, again, to derive this, again, you can go to previous lectures, which I mentioned about energy. I consider this to be a known fact. So, let's talk about a gravitational field. This is a function which is a potential um, of this field at any point. Now, what is this particular field in our um, language which, which is related to the previous lectures. It's a scalar field. This is a scalar. Now this f is a vector because it has a magnitude and a direction. Now this is amount of work. So it's a scalar. So we have a scalar field. Okay, great. So we have scalar field. Now, what exactly do we need? This problem is what is the gradient of this field. Very simple problem. Now, we remember that gradient is nabla u at x, y, z, where nabla is d by dx, d by dy, and d by dz, a pseudo vector multiply by this constant, that means we have to really produce vector, which is this, where u is basically a function of three arguments. And we have this function. Okay, all we need to do is basically to take partial derivative by x, by y, and by z. That's it. Now, thankfully, they are symmetrical, so we will take only for x, for example, and then we will um, extend it to y and z by symmetry, basically. Minus. Minus. Okay. So, what is the um, derivative of this. Well, we can always rewrite u at x, y, z as minus g m and x squared plus y squared plus z. In 
d square minus one half, right? One divided by square root is the minus one half um, exponent. Okay, that's easier to take the derivative, right? So the derivative would be, let's say, by x. equals by x. So minus jm retains. These are just numbers, scholars. Now if I have something in some uh, exponent, so that would be exponent times this in an exponent minus 1, right? times derivative of inner function, inner function by x only, so we ignore y and z, so it would be 2x. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Same thing, by the way. The exponent, and then we uh, reduce exponent by minus 1. Basically, it's all related to x uh, to some um, exponent a, if you want to d by dx, it would be a times x minus 1. So you have to remember these from the um, calculus. So which is equal to, which is equal to, Two and two minus and minus, so it would be g times m times x square plus y square plus z square minus three seconds times x. Okay, great. Now, so this is our x component. Now, y component would be. Now d uh, u u at x y z by d y would be g m x square plus y square plus z square minus three second times y and uh, d u x y z by d z uh, d z would be GM nothing to do with general motors that's the gravitational constant times mass times x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 3 second times z great so we have three components this is our vector of gradient interestingly hmm, what is the length of this vector? Well, the length of this vector is if we will take square of 1, square of 2, and square of 3, the third, or add them together and have a square root of this. Right? Okay. So, square of this is g square m square x square and x square plus y square plus z square minus 3, right? That's square of this. Same thing for y square, same thing for z square. This remains exactly the same. If I will add them together, I will have basically g square, m square and this minus 3 can be uh, factored out and I will have x square plus y square plus z square in the first uh, degree right so I have minus 3 as a degree of this sum and plus 1 degree of this sum so the result would be g square m square x square plus y square plus z square minus 3 plus 1 would be minus 2, right? 
Now we square the root of this, and what do we have? We have gm times x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 1, which means 1 over, basically, right? So let me write it down this way. more familiar. And what is this? If I will add m here, that would be gravitational constant times mass of the source, mass of the probe, divided by square of the distance. This is a gravitational force, remember, of x, y, z. That's what we started with. This is the Newton's gravitational law. So what's interesting is that the gradient is basically a, a force uh, 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 of gravitation for a unit mass. So if m is equal to 1, gravitational field as a scalar field has a gradient, and the gradient is basically if it first of all it's a vector right because it's it has x component y component and z component which means it's directed radially right because this is the same this this multiplier is the same and only x y and z is so basically it's like x y z times something times the length of it so the gradient is directed exactly towards the um, center of mass of the uh, source of the gravitation and its uh, magnitude of this vector gradient is a vector so its magnitude is equal to the force by unit uh, mass very interesting so potential is a scalar field gravitational force per unit of mass is actually a gradient of potential uh, of the field. Okay, that's the first problem. We finished. just giving you not a practical field that just a field for educational purposes <laughs> okay this is a vector field now XYZ and it has three components for every point X Y and Z I have a vector vector has three components X Y and Z so component of the vector projection of the vector on the x-axis is zero on the y-axis is zero so it's only projection on the z field is uh, of the z-axis is equal to basically the distance from the origin of coordinate okay my first problem is just describe it I started to describe this field verbally and how can we just draw the picture maybe? Well, these are coordinates x, y, z. So for every point x, y, z. What is this vector? Well, projection on x and y should be zero, right? So it should be directed only uh, along the z-axis. So all my fields are um, all my ve vectors are directed, well in this case vertically, if I consider z to be a vertical and x and y to be horizontal plate, plane. Okay, 
Now, what's interesting is that the vectors which are close to xy plane, which have zero uh, z coordinate, so vectors here are zero. A little bit higher than that, they are small. And the higher they are, the stronger they are. Because their magnitude is z. So the higher we start, the longer the vector will be. So they're all parallel and their length is proportional to their uh, to, to the height of the point where they start from x, y uh, plane. Okay, so that's a kind of a verbal description of the field. Now, what is the front surface? Front surface is where all these vectors are the same. Okay, the answer to this question is, well, any plane parallel to xy plane would be a front surface because all of the vectors originated on any point here will have the same z coordinate and that's why they will have the same magnitude. So they're all the same because direction is all the same, it's all vertical parallel to z axis and their lengths would be always the same because they have the same z coordinate of origination of the vector. Next, what is divergence? Okay, divergence, that's something calculable. Divergence of vector d of x, y, z is equal to nabla scalar product with vector, which is d0 by dx plus d0 by dy plus d z by dz, which is equal to 1, because this is 0, this is 0, and this is 1. <coughs> this is my x component, vx if you wish, this is vx, this is vy, projection on the y, and this is vz. So, Divergence is always 1. That's interesting. Now, why is it positive? You remember we were, we were talking about um, divergence, let's say, of the wind. We were talking about wind coming from the higher pressure to the lower pressure. Here we have exactly the same, except it's from the low to the high. So we have certain direction. Masses are moving in some direction when the air is uh, concerned. If there is a wind with non-zero di uh, di diversion, it means it's not constant everywhere. It's maybe stronger in one case and, and, and weaker from another. We really have a source of um, higher density going into um, molecules are going into a lower density. So there is certain source of something. Now here we also have something. From nothing we have something. So it's just reverse project from the low to high. But anyway there is a movement. There is a, there is a real movement. It's not just like a wind going with a constant speed everywhere in the same direction. That's not the case. Then the diversion, diversion would be uh, mm, zero. But in our, in our case it's positive. From something, from something we get something more, basically. That's what it is. Okay. Is there any place where diversion is equal to zero? No. Because it's always equal to one, it's constant. And the next is curl. Okay. Curl is vector which is a vector product of nabla and v. Okay, so what is the vector v? 
v is 0 times i plus 0 times j plus z times k. Right? If i, j, and k are unit vectors along the axis. Okay, what is nabla? Nabla is I will also use d by dx i plus d by d y j plus d by d z k. Now, this is not the real multiplication, but again, we are using symbolics of vector algebra to basically have our lives easier, so to speak. Now, um, what is the vector product of these two things? Well, if you remember, um, we were actually calculating this in a previous lecture, and uh, it's a vector with the components, which I will just try to write from memory, but in any case, if you will go to the textual part of the uh, mm, of this particular lecture, it's all derived in in more details. So basically, it's like this. So you have x component, y component, and and z component, right? So for z component, I do remember it's um, d uh, of v y by dx minus d vx by d y and this is my z component it's later it, it, that's multiplied by k now what is in this particular case dy y is zero so this is zero and x by y uh, it's also zero so this is zero Okay, now I will just uh, substitute uh, circularly, so it would be dz by dx minus dx by dz times j would be equal to dz by dx, it's zero, and uh, dx by dz uh, now, this doesn't depend on x, it depends only on, on z, that's why the, the derivative, partial derivative is zero. Now, in this case, it's just straight zero, so it's also zero. And uh, the third one would be d y z x by d y minus d no, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I think this should be y. x, y, yes, that's y. Uh, is that the same thing? z by y is 0, of course, and y, yeah, it's still 0. And here we have dx by z minus dz by dx times i and it's also zero because this is zero and z doesn't depend on um, this is v. v doesn't depend on x so it's all zero so the curl of our field is equal to zero now it's kind of obvious because think about this way if I will have this um, uh, pedal wheel positioned anywhere. You see, all these are parallel. And whenever I put it anywhere, if I put it in, in such a way that pedals, if I put uh, my pedal wheel with the axis um, parallel to Z, um, now my pedals would be this way, right? So it will not push anything, it will not spin. If I will turn, let's say, put it parallel to 
um, uh, that it, it if I will put it pa x is parallel to z. Okay, if I will put uh, x is parallel to x or y uh, anywhere, my um, my forces will be the same on all plates, left and right of the axis. So again, since they are the same on this plane, then if if I put axis this way, my my uh, my uh, pedals would be let's say horizontal, but on both sides of the axis of the of the axis, that would be the same force. So this is a, a field, a vector field, which will, if these uh, vectors are forces, they will always be the same, regardless of how I put my mm, pedal wheel, and that's why pedal wheel will not be. Uh, spinning, and that's why the curl is equal to zero. That's it. Third problem. It's a simple, actually, kind of field, obviously, specifically for educational purposes, just to go through some calculations. And the third problem will be similar, just different field. I will use a two-dimensional field minus y square root of x square plus y square x now question is why did they put it this way what is the length of this vector it's square of this plus square of this which will be y square plus x square divided by x square by y square, so the length is always 1. So I wanted to have a field which all the vectors at all points will have the same magnitude, which is equal to 1. Secondly, let me just have a vector xy multiplied by v. Now, xy is radial vector. Now, if I will multiply it, it's a scalar product. So it's x times minus xy divided by square root plus y times x divided by square root. Whatever, x squared plus x equals to 0, right? minus xy plus yx. Scalar product of this vector, of the unit length, is 0 with a radial, which means it's perpendicular. So I'm having a field which is always, at any point, equal the same value by magnitude, but it's always perpendicular. That's my field. So it's always of the same length, but always perpendicular. So it's kind of circular field, right? OK, so I probably will have a curl not equal to 0. But let's do it step by step. So first of all, it's verbal description. All the vectors are perpendicular to the radius towards the point where the vector is originated and all of the vectors have the same length so that's the verbal description of the field now you can well it's a uh, two dimensional so you can imagine it's on this uh, surface of the board right so all vectors are kind of radial but again the length is the same okay now is there something which can be called a front line front line well in a three-dimensional, we are talking about surface. In two-dimensional, we are talking about front line. That's the set of points where the vectors in each point, all the vectors, are exactly the same. Well, the answer is any line which is going from, uh, from the center would be such a uh, front line because all the vectors will be perpendicular to this line and all of them have the length of 1. 
So this is the front line, so to speak. So the whole, like, uh, I don't know, vector field, if you wish, are moving like this. Okay, all right, fine. Now, what's the divergence? Okay, divergence is a scalar product of nabla and our vector. Okay, so we have to calculate derivative of this by x plus derivative of this by y. Okay? Alright, fine. So, my vx is equal to minus y times x squared plus y squared uh, minus one half. And I have to uh, partial derivative by x is equal minus y is just a multiplier because we are deriving by x partial derive par partial derivative minus one half that's the uh, the degree exponential x square plus y square minus three second which is one half minus one times two x. which is 2 and 2 goes, plus and plus goes, which is x, y, times x squared plus y squared, minus 3 second, right? Great. Now, <coughs> what if I take the, the y component of my vector by dy? Again, x, that's basically x times x squared plus y squared in the minus one half. But I am deriving by y, so x is just a multiplier. And then I have to multiply by the, um, this x squared plus y squared to the minus one half by y. So that would be x squared plus y squared minus 3 second and 1 half and 2y which is equal to um, which is equal to uh, minus 1 half sorry minus 1 half which is equal to x, y, yeah, 2 and 1 half goes minus 1 half. Minus remains, it's important. Why is it important? Because if I will add them up, that would be 0. So, divergence is equal to 0. Well, um, again, some explanation. Remember, divergence of the wind would be not zero if the wind goes from a higher to a lower. Um, so, in the area where it's higher pressure, the higher density, it would be positive, and in the area where it's lower, it would be negative. But in between, where the air is just moving without any kind of modification in the magnitude um, if they are far away, these points of lower and higher pressure, then somewhere in between <coughs> divergence would be equal to zero because it's just moving the masses without modification, modification of their density. Here we have exactly the same situation because all the vectors they are of different direction, I understand that, but they all have the, the same magnitude, equal to 1, right? And that's probably why we have this, this particular result. Mm, does the direction make some uh, influence on the, on, the, uh, on, on, uh, on the divergence? I don't know. Probably it does, because in my case, everything is symmetrical. Everything is really circular. <coughs> now, if 
my vectors would be of the same lengths, but not such a nice symmetrical um, direction. Maybe in some cases we will have um, divergence greater or, or, or less than zero, but not in this case. In this case, we have everything very, very smoothly moving without any moving, with, without any uh, change of direction. Uh, without any change of magnitude, sorry. So maybe if I will do it somehow differently, and you might actually try to create some kind of a field where the magnitude of all the vectors is the same, but the versions would still be somewhere different from zero. That's an interesting question. <coughs> okay. Now, where is the versions? equal to zero everywhere again and I, I do attribute this to constant magnitude and relatively symmetrical kind of always circular um, direction and the last thing is let's calculate the curl okay the curl curl is a little bit more involved but what we have to do is exactly the same as I did in the previous problem so again it's d v y by d x minus d v x by d y k okay. that's the z component that's what I remember and everything else are circularly change the, the variables <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, there is no K here. Oh, I forgot. This is a, a two-dimensional, not three-dimensional. So basically, that's it. That's all we have. This is the curl in two-dimensional case. If you remember, I started with this when I was trying to explain the curl. And then I moved to three-dimensional, where I had this all I, J, K, etc. In two-dimensional, that's it. So, this is my Vx, this is my Vy. All right, let's just calculate. Uh, d v y by d x is equal to um, minus y stands like a multiplier because it doesn't depend on x. Uh, x plus y square in the power of minus one half, so I have minus one half. X square plus y square minus three half, and two x. Actually, I have already done for the uh, for um, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Dy. That's this one. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. So it's x divided. So and I'm. Um, partially deriving by x, so it's not that simple. So it's um, u times v okay, u v is equal to u v plus u v. Remember this formula for derivatives? Okay, so in this case, my u is x and my v is x plus plus y square to the power of minus one half. Okay, so derivative of x by x is one times this thing without change. Plus x is without change, and now derivative by um, of the second function, so it's, uh, it's minus one half x squared plus y squared minus three half times two x which is what? Okay, just let's let's just leave it as is. 
Now my d v x by d y would be similar. So first I have the top one, so minus stays. Um, uh, so it's one times x squared plus y squared to the power of minus one minus one half. So that's the one thing. And then minus y minus one half x squared plus y squared minus three half times two y. So this is the difference between them. Now I have to, I have to take, and that would be a curl. So what's the difference between them? <coughs> uh, now two and two would be actually uh, out. So the difference would be, this is x square. Now, if I would change sign to a minus would be plus here. Now minus and minus and then I would change the sign so it would be minus here. Uh, two and two can go. Minus stays. So if I will drive this. So my this is minus and this is minus. This is plus and this is plus. So I'll have two x square plus y square minus one in the power of minus one half. And here I have, and here I have x square plus y square um, with a minus sign. So it would be x square plus y square in the first minus three seconds. So again, it's minus one half. Right? x squared and y squared, it would be x squared plus y squared in the first degree, and this is minus 3 seconds, so degree we will add and that would be this. So it's 2 minus 1, it would be only 1. So that would be my curl of V. That's interesting. Now, um, first of all, obviously it's the lengths of the um, distance basically from zero to the point of interest, right? So the curl is diminishing, it's inversely proportional to a distance. The further we are, the less curly basically the field becomes. And that's kind of obvious because since I since our field is circular the further we are, since vectors are of the same lengths, remember we started from the same length, so this is equal to 1. So they are more, the, the, the further they are from the center of this circle, the closer they are to being parallel to each other. Because on a small, on a small radius, on a small radius, two vectors are on this particular angle between themselves. So that's kind of more curly than if I will take a, a, a bigger radius. They are much more parallel to each other. So that's why the curliness of this particular vector is diminishing the further we are from the, uh, from the center. And the proportionality is exactly like a distance from the center. 
Well, that's it for today. It's just a small exercises in differentiating, basically. So you have to remember what is the gradient, which is multiplication by nabla, which is uh, divergence, uh, which is scalar product by nabla, and what is the curl, which is a vector cross product with the nabla. That's it. Everything else is technicality. Uh, please read the notes for this lecture. It's on the uh, unizor.com. And, uh, <coughs> well, basically that's it. The next would be um, related to uh, Maxwell's equation. So I will use this apparatus to present the Maxwell's equation. That's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.